An apsis Greek, hapsis plural apsides, Greek, hapsides is an extreme point in the orbit of an object. The word comes via Latin from Greek and is cognate with apse. For elliptic orbits about a larger body, there are two apsides, named with the prefixes peri from peri, peri meaning near and ap, apo from ap, o, ap o, meaning away from added to a reference to the body being orbited. For a body orbiting the Sun, the point of least distance is the perihelion, and the point of greatest distance is the aphelion. The terms become periastron and apostron when discussing orbits around other stars. For any satellite of Earth, including the Moon, the point of least distance is the perigee and greatest distance the apogee. For objects in lunar orbit, the point of least distance is sometimes called the perisynthion and the greatest distance the apocynthion. Perilune and apolune are also used. For an orbit around any barycenter, the terms periapsis and apoapsis or apapsis are used. Paracenter and apocenter are equivalent alternatives. A straight line connecting the periapsis and apoapsis is the line of apsides. This is the major axis of the ellipse, its greatest diameter. The center of mass, or barycenter, of a two body system lies on this line at one of the two foci of the ellipse. When one body is sufficiently larger than the other, this focus may be located within the larger body. However, whether this is the case, both bodies are in similar elliptical orbits. Both orbits share a common focus at the system's barycenter, with their respective lines of apsides being of length inversely proportional to their masses. Historically, in geocentric systems, apsides were measured from the center of the Earth. However, in the case of the Moon, the barycenter of the Earth-Moon system or the Earth-Moon barycenter as the common focus of both bodies' orbits about each other, is about 75% of the way from Earth's center to its surface. In orbital mechanics, the apsis technically refers to the distance measured between the barycenters of the central body and orbiting body. However, in the case of spacecraft, the family of terms are commonly used to refer to the orbital altitude of the spacecraft from the surface of the central body assuming a constant, standard reference radius. Mathematical <laughs> formulae <laughs> 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 These formulae characterize the paracenter and apocenter of an orbit. Paracenter maximum speed v per equals 1 plus e mu 1 minus e a Text style v underscore text per equals sqrt frac 1 plus e mu 1 e a at minimum paracenter distance r per equals 1 minus e a text style r underscore text per equals 1 e a apocenter minimum speed v App equals one minus e mu one plus e a text style v underscore text app equals sqrt frac one e mu one plus e a at maximum apocenter distance r app equals one plus e a text style r underscore text app equals 1 plus e a while in accordance with kepler's laws of planetary motion based on the conservation of angular momentum and the conservation of energy these two quantities are constant for a given orbit specific relative angular momentum h equals 1 minus e 2 mu a display style h equals sqrt left 1 e caret 2 right mu a specific orbital energy epsilon equals minus mu 2 a display style var epsilon equals frac mu 2 a where a is the semi major axis equals r per plus r app 2 
Display style a equals frac r underscore text per plus r underscore text app two. Mu is the standard gravitational parameter. E is the eccentricity, defined as E equals R app minus R per R app plus R per equals one minus two R app R per plus one Display style E equals FRAC R underscore text app R underscore text per R underscore text app plus R underscore text per equals one FRAC two FRAC R underscore text app R underscore text per plus one Note that for conversion from heights above the surface to distances between an orbit and its primary, the radius of the central body has to be added, and conversely. The arithmetic mean of the two limiting distances is the length of the semi-major axis A. The geometric mean of the two distances is the length of the semi-minor axis B. The geometric mean of the two limiting speeds is minus 2 epsilon equals mu Display style sqrt minus two var epsilon equals sqrt frac mu a, which is the speed of a body in a circular orbit whose radius is a. Display style a. Topic terminology. The words paracenter and apocenter are often seen, although periapsis, apoapsis are preferred in technical usage. Various related terms are used for other celestial objects. The G, helion, astron, and galacticon forms are frequently used in the astronomical literature when referring to the Earth, Sun, stars and the galactic center respectively. The suffix Jove is occasionally used for Jupiter, while Saturnium has very rarely been used in the last 50 years for Saturn. The G form is commonly used as a generic closest approach to planet term instead of specifically applying to the Earth. During the Apollo program, the terms Parasynthian and Apocynthian referencing Cynthia, an alternative name for the Greek moon goddess Artemis were used when referring to the moon. Regarding black holes, the term peri, apomalasma from a Greek root was used by physicist Jeffrey A. Landis in 1998, before peri, aponigracon from Latin appeared in the scientific literature in 2002, as well as peri, apobothron from Greek bothros, meaning hole or pit. <laughs> Topic. Terminology summary The following suffixes are added to peri and apo to form the terms for the nearest and farthest orbital distances from these objects. For the solar system objects, only the suffixes for the Earth and Sun are commonly used, the other suffixes are rarely, if ever used. Instead, the generic suffix of apsis is used. Topic. Perihelion and aphelion of the Earth For the orbit of the Earth around the Sun, the time of apsis is often expressed in terms of a time relative to seasons, since this determines the contribution of the elliptical orbit to seasonal variations. The variation of the seasons is primarily controlled by the annual cycle of the elevation angle of the Sun, which is a result of the tilt of the axis of the Earth measured from the plane of the ecliptic. The Earth's eccentricity and other orbital elements are not constant, but vary slowly due to the perturbing effects of the planets and other objects in the solar system. See Milankovitch cycles. On a very long time scale, the dates of the perihelion and of the aphelion progress through the seasons, and they make one complete cycle in 22,000 to 26,000 years. There is a corresponding movement of the position of the stars as seen from Earth that is called the apsidal precession. This is closely related to the precession of the axis. Currently, the Earth reaches perihelion in early January, approximately 14 days after the December solstice. At perihelion, the Earth's center is about 0.98329 astronomical units, o, or 147,098,070 kilometers, 91,402,500 miles from the sun's center. The Earth reaches aphelion currently in early July, approximately 14 days after the June solstice. 
The aphelion distance between the Earth's and Sun's centers is currently about 1.01671 astronomical units or 152,097,700 kilometers, 94,509,100 miles. In the short term, the dates of perihelion and aphelion can vary up to 2 days from one year to another. This significant variation is due to the presence of the Moon. While the Earth Moon barycenter is moving on a stable orbit around the Sun, the position of the Earth's center, which is on average about 4,700 kilometres from the barycenter, could be shifted in any direction from it, and this affects the timing of the actual closest approach between the Sun's and the Earth's centers, which in turn defines the timing of perihelion in a given year. Astronomers commonly express the timing of perihelion relative to the vernal equinox not in terms of of days and hours, but rather as an angle of orbital displacement, the so-called longitude of the periapsis also called longitude of the pericenter. For the orbit of the Earth, this is called the longitude of perihelion, and in 2000 it was about 282.895 degrees, by the year 2010, this had advanced by a small fraction of a degree to about 283.067 degrees. The dates and times of the perihelions and aphelions for several past and future years are listed in the following table. Topic: <laughs> Planetary perihelion and aphelion. The following table shows the distances of the planets and dwarf planets from the sun at their perihelion and aphelion. The following chart shows the range of distances of the planets, dwarf planets and Halley's comet from the sun. The images below show the perihelion green dot and aphelion red dot points of the inner and outer planets. Perihelion and aphelion points Topic. See also Eccentric anomaly Perifocal coordinate system Solstice Flyby space flight Topic References Topic. External links Apogee – Perigee Photographic Size Comparison, Perseus.gr Aphelion – Perihelion Photographic Size Comparison, Perseus.gr Earth's Seasons, Equinoxes, Solstices, Perihelion, and Aphelion, 2000-2020, USNO.Navy. Mill.